You're listening to Gamesform's Mobilize and Monetize podcast. Dive into the world of mobile gaming with us as we explore the latest trends and discuss best practices. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Games Forum's Mobilize and Monetize podcast. I'm Mariam, Head of Content at Games Forum, and today I am delighted to be joined by none other than Ben Yeager, who is VP of EMEA at Maloco. Ben, fantastic to have you on. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Mariam. It's great to be here. Yeah, so we've got much, much to talk about. So everything from Maloco, tech, general challenges facing the mobile games industry, and much, much more. So I kind of just want to kick off our discussion with the first question I have for you here, Ben. So for those who are curious, what sort of led you to your current role as VP EMEA at Maloco? And how has your sort of career journey shaped your perspective on the mobile gaming industry? Yeah, that's um, the trip down memory lane is, is, is always um, fun. Um, so I, I ended up in this role um, this is actually a almost almost fifteen year um, journey in in app performance marketing, yeah. um, but only my third role. So I've been um, with uh, two other companies prior to Moloco. Right. Um, uh, one was a company that was called SponsorPay, uh, which is now. Uh, called Fiber, rebranded as Fiber, and is now part of Digital Turbine. Um, that's where I uh, initially started my journey, um, where we helped at, as as a mobile um, team, both serving uh, publishers, helping them monetize, mm. as well as advertisers. So. It, um, a typical end-to-end ad network that later turned into an SSP and so on. Um, and um, already there, very heavily focused on on gaming um, uh, clients. And then I moved on to uh, Apps Flyer, which is uh, a, the, a dominant um, mobile measurement um, partner um, and there, I was responsible for the expansion of the um, establishment and then expansion of uh, the German-speaking region and then later Central European region. Um, and the, the, the third, third uh, position now here at Miloco, um, I'm overseeing uh, the um, EMEA business, as, as you mentioned. And... The reason I joined was that although I had been um, on the media side, hmm. um, I, uh, I I was introduced um, to, to Moloko and some of uh, the leaders that were um, coming in um, uh, by an ex-colleague of mine uh, who, who had left Fiber, worked with me at Fiber, and then went to, um, to Google and spent uh, the past eight years or so at Google. Um, and he introduced me to uh, uh, Sunil, who runs our our global business, um, who is an expert um, at building ads businesses, uh, where he did so at, at Google, built the uh, Google app dev team, um, later led uh, Google um, cloud uh, gaming. Um, and I, I just... And, and a very smart a person that uh, I really um, enjoyed interacting with and I thought I could learn a lot from mm. uh, and that made me end up here uh, after uh, him convincing me that um, Moloko is not just um, a, a media business but actually mm. uh, introducing me to Ikjin, our founder, who showed me um, his vision for the company and made it very clear that Moloco is a uh, machine learning company first, very deep tech, um, and um, only media company second. Interesting. So you kind of led me into my second question here perfectly. So machine learning, you know, those in the industry know how much Moloco deals with this sort of thing. So how is machine learning, in your opinion, sort of transforming the mobile advertising landscape? And what sort of strategies are driving the success in this space? You know, I think 
for a question like this, there's no one sort of, you know, better equipped to answer than you, Ben. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think for for us specifically, machine learning, um, which is our bread and butter, Moloko is M, is made up of MLC, machine learning company, and then um, slightly adjusted. Um, so, so I, I, I think what, what, it, particularly in the advertising um, landscape, uh, where the yeah. dis- decisions have to be made on huge scale in extremely short period of time, um, it, it has been proven that only machine learning can actually um, is able to make decisions in an effective way that 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 of uh, aimed at driving um, outcomes that advertisers are desiring. Yeah. So it it's been transformative in actually making um, real time bidding possible um, for advertisers in a performant yeah. way. Um, so that's that's kind of the the background. But we've we've obviously since a year now have seen. Um, machine learning or AI transform um, every aspect of uh, the, the game development, not just the advertising side, but absolutely out, from ideation using generative AI to creative production with generative AI um, and so on. And, and I think now people are much more familiar with the power of um, this technology. Yeah. Uh, which uh, in the past uh, was vague and probably also not necessarily that important um, in terms of uh, if you think about um, a car, you you just care about how like how smoothly and potentially how fast you get from A to B, uh, but you don't necessarily, not everyone cares about what the engine looks like. And so... Uh, for us, it, it, what what drove the Maloko machine was always um, machine learning, but it's not necessarily what people cared about. They cared about results. Yeah. And now people are more familiar with machine learning. And so all of a sudden, this also becomes an aspect that they start to care about and under- because they understand that they need to feed the machine with data and so on and right. so forth in order to actually get the best results. So there, there has been a shift in, in understanding how to work with machines to get the best results. And I think that is a very positive development that we've seen in gaming, but everywhere. Absolutely. It's been really interesting to see what you guys have done in this space. Because obviously you mentioned this, like, you know, machine learning, AI, these things are all mainstays. I think it's pretty much established at these, this point that these things are here to stay. So, you know, seeing what Maloka is doing has been really interesting because it's, like you said, your bread and butter. So on that topic and on the topic of tech specifically, can you share with our listeners some sort of examples um, of how Maloka's technology has improved client campaign performances across key metrics? You know, people love, as you know, in our industry to know sort of, you know, the nitty gritty of the stats and the details and the metrics. So can you share any of that? Yeah, sure. I, I think um, I, I think we we need to um, take a small step back and and think about what um, advertisers care about mostly, um, and and I think that is acquiring users in a profitable way. Right. Yeah. And there's a debate what the right metric is. Um, I think for a long time it's been um, return on ad spend, um, and uh, th- that's what m- most companies are optim- optimizing towards. I think there's um, right. yeah, so so there's there's return on ad spend, and then there's a time component uh, definitely in which I want to recoup my advertising spend. And this is ultimately what um, what advertise what what drives uh, it's it's the engine that that keeps uh, mobile games uh, growing and going. 
Yeah. Um, and and I think uh, that is the metric that uh, Moloko has been focused on from very early on. Um, a, a day seven ROAS um, as as uh, as a metric to try and improve that, and that meant in, at, at sometimes um, neglecting other KPIs such as cost per install um, uh, and, and and at times even cost per action um, because. Uh, because there's on the return on ad spend is an, is an equation that is made up of uh, the revenue on the one side, so money coming in and then cost on the other. Um, and as long as uh, you're able to find high value users, you're willing to pay um, high, like much more for those as well. So uh, one of the when you asked me which KPI um, was Moloko able to um, to to basically improve for our advertisers, it would be a return on ad spend, and uh, in doing so, um, allowing them to uh, grow and reinvest constantly the the, the money that uh, they are spending on advertising because. Um, the the returns are so uh, profitable and and uh, yeah allowing allowing them to feed that uh, growth uh, wheel. Interesting. So obviously, Ben, you deal with a very um, sort of nuanced region, and that is of course EMEA. So how does Maloko help tailor its mobile advertising strategies to cater to such a diverse? cultural and economic landscapes such as the EMEA region. I mean, you recently wrote a piece in Games on Games on the website, you know, regarding this. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I I think there's um so what I was focused on in, in that piece was the different creative um preferences uh that that exists uh on, on a global landscape. But you're obviously right that in in EMEA the huge differences um, from yeah. from the ranging from the UK to um, South Africa maybe to uh, yes. Dubai, UAE um, there's there's obviously very big um, differences in, in how to acquire uh, users and what what uh, cultural tastes and differences are. Um, but to be honest, when when we think about uh, gaming uh, clients that are EMEA based that we are serving here, they still are very heavily focused on acquiring top tier countries and and less less concerned about acquiring uh, users in in the EMEA region. So, um, th- and I think that's the beauty of. Uh, gaming that you can just open up a global audience and and find uh, users wherever they are. Yeah. Um, this is very different to other verticals that we serve. Uh, e-commerce. When you think about having to ship r- real world goods to somebody's um, home, yeah. Um, in 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 the games or software space, you have a, a global audience that you can reach, and there it's more about finding um profitable users wherever they are and yeah. that's i think that's the, the 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 real advantage of working with a company like moloko um that has access to every single um connected user uh, on the planet um i think we process six um six million uh, bid requests per second wow. uh, so it's like huge um huge uh, potential um in terms of reaching your audience and you don't have to be focused on the region that you're in in EMEA specifically for example so yeah so with EMEA 
out of curiosity, you know, you you touched on this a little bit. There's every set has its own sort of nuances, cultural nu- nuances, behaviors, that sort of thing. So, how do consumer behaviors and preferences in mobile gaming differ across the various countries within this region? And you know, what sort of things is Maloka doing to adapt to these differences? Yeah, I think the 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 there there are differences in uh which on which platforms they they are present yeah. um, or operating systems so i think if you look at um the share uh, that that uh, ios has um in the uk it's much larger than it is for the rest of mainland europe for example where android is mm-hmm. as the dominant the dominant operating system um th- then i think Obviously, uh, depending on um, the uh, disposable income, you could you can also tell that uh, th- there are countries where uh, just the the buying behavior is is very different, and and your chance of finding um, uh, the like whales or high high value um, payers is uh much smaller uh, and and uh, on the, but on the other hand the cost of acquiring users in in those um regions is also smaller and yeah. since all you care about is the gap between um the value of your user and the cost of your user it it, it is also attractive to acquire users all over um yeah. the globe so we've seen um our customers do extremely well um with uh global campaigns or or at least like uh campaigns that target entire regions and then finding le- letting the machine find pockets of users that are actually meeting the mark and and reaching those uh, day 7 ras goals yeah uh, and 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 not trying to impose any um pre-existing um expectations on 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 the market um i think is is valuable L- like doing data exploration letting the machine find those users is the is the path that seems to work best if if you have uh if you're looking for real scale absolutely and it's actually this is something that's sort of um in addition to what you're saying but in terms of cultural nuances like you're dealing with such a vast region and i remember reading an article lately about how big mobile gaming is in the Middle East and North Africa, for example. So it's like out of interest, like you must be seeing so many different sort of trends that are relevant to specific regions and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I, I think um, rather than focusing on on the differences, I think that the um the the beauty of uh having a machine um learning tool is that you can um let it uh figure out uh commonalities and right. figure out patterns that that are emerging and 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 using um the the power of uh just uh, vast scale and and, and huge data um, yeah. to help you drive uh, your growth. Interesting stuff. So we always ask all our guests to sort of do it a little bit of future gazing. So obviously we work for an industry that is ever changing, ever evolving. So what are you most excited for in terms of the future of mobile gaming and what you're seeing? I'm I'm excited. Uh, about um, the, we, we spoke about machine learning and generative AI. Yeah, and I think we 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 lack the imagination um, as to what might lie ahead in terms of uh, the impact that that this may have on game development, on creative development. Yeah. Um, and and this is something that I'm particularly excited about when it comes to mobile games, um, the 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 unknown unknowns, um, because I'm sure 
we will be um, mind blown what what uh, can um, arise in, in in the very near future. Um, yeah, I think that would be um, my yeah. I, I expect um, very new, innovative um, concepts, ideas, creatives. Um, yeah. Especially within the realm of machine learning, I feel. I feel like the possibilities, we're only just starting to see the beginning of what the possibilities are. I mean, it's endless at this point. Yes. I mean, you could, Im you could imagine, um, like, this is go goes back to, I, I think, what we can imagine, but and, and, and it's already uh, quite far from where we're now. Like, yeah. a, a game that is uh, developing as you play it. So we both um, playing a game and your game experience might be completely different because you behave in a certain way versus how I behave. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's, and it's adapting on the fly. And, and so, so I think more and more personalization is to be expected as, mm -hmm. as one theme. Um, but as I said, I think the, the, the beauty is it, in all the areas that I can't imagine. Um, yeah, what, absolutely. What would, I mean, yeah. what you just mentioned, that, that would be such a cool thing. I don't think I've heard of that before, but that alone yeah. would be would be awesome. Um, interesting stuff, Ben. So last question for you here. Um, obviously, we can't talk about the opportunities without sort of, you know, touching on some of the challenges. So in your opinion, what are some of the most sort of pressing challenges facing the industry today? And how can we collectively work to, you know, address them? I, I I think you know, for the past few years we've seen a shift towards privacy uh, to a privacy first world yeah and and that um, has come with the challenge uh, of bridging uh, what all the practices that that were prevalent um, prior to 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 this emerging, which was uh, user level um, targeting, user level attribution, yeah, um, and I think that that is a challenge that we're still um, trying to come to grips with and overcoming and and turning challenges and opportunities is um, the name of the game. And I, I, I think um, we will continue to see, uh, as, as an uh, at least as an advertising industry, um, this being our main challenge. Absolutely, I think um, that's something that I've seen that everyone. I think the commonality between all of us in the mobile industry is balancing that sort of personalization with the respect of people's privacy and all these things that are coming out like GDPR um, and so on. Um, interesting stuff, Ben. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been some really fascinating insights. Um, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to come on to Mobilize and Monetize. Thank you, Mariam. And that is it for this week's episode. Until next time. Yeah.